One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. We are going to have some fun in today's podcast episode because we are talking about bad podcast pitches. Like, this is like the roasting episode. And don't worry, I'm not going to make it really uncomfortable and call out people by name or have like sit here and read all of the terrible pitches that I've gotten over the years and just really put people on blast. I'm not going to do that. But I have been getting more and more really bad podcast pitches lately. Like they're just, they're so lazy. They're not well done. And most of the time, they don't even make sense. Like this could be shocking to you if you're brand new to podcasting and you haven't really been bombarded by a whole bunch of pitches, but it does happen. And so instead of just deleting them immediately and forgetting about them forever, I'm turning it into content. I'm turning that trash into treasure today and giving you something that you can sink your teeth into when it comes to what not to do. And then of course, we're going to highlight some of the things that I've learned along the way that can really help you up your game when it comes to pitching to be on other people's podcasts. So we're going to cover those bad podcast pitches, how to avoid them, what to do when you get them. And I also have some exclusive content from members of this community that I cannot wait to share. So for everybody that contributed, thank you so much for sharing your own experiences because some of them are awful and I love sharing these stories here on the podcast. So if you're thinking about pitching podcasts soon, or you want to know if the pitches that you're receiving are legit as a host and are a good idea, then you'll have a better understanding after today's episode. So let's get right to it. Welcome to the Profit Podcast, where we teach you how to start, launch, and market your content with confidence. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of content creation, this is the show that will help be your time-saving shortcut. So let's get right to it, shall we? 
Okay, so I'm going to start today with three recent bad pitches. I'm not going to read them all, but I am going to read the highlights of where things went wrong. <laughs> like, think about it as like the instant replay of, okay, we're going to stop and do some highlights. We're going to, you know, I'm circling things behind the scenes and highlighting like this is where things fell apart. So again, you know what to do when you are, you know, pitching to be on other shows, but also the things that I find are red flags immediately and you should throw it away. (laughs) the road away, don't respond, run the other direction when you get pitches like this. So let me go to the first one. So I have three, like I said, this is really the one that was, um, it kind of, it took the cake for me. It, it was, it was, yeah. And I received these just a few weeks ago. It's not like these have been sitting around for a long time. Like this was probably six weeks ago that I received this one. Um, And this is one that really, like, it was on this day that I reached out to the community and asked, are y'all getting these two? It's really bad. Okay. So first of all, it's an email and it says podcast guest request. Okay. That's, that's not bad. I've received, you know, I've received all kinds of stuff. I want to be on the podcast. I want to say, okay, so it's not a red flag. It's okay. I don't know this person. So their name didn't register in my mind as someone that I should know, but I open it. And the first thing it says is, hey comma, no name, no like, hey, Crystal, hey, host of the Profit Podcast. It just says, hey, that's red flag number one. (laughs) No, like that's literally just the greeting, the opening greeting, red flag number one. I will only really even entertain the idea of having someone on my show if they call me by name and they actually spell it correctly. You would be shocked how many times, like it's literally in my email, crystal at crystal profit. Like that is my email. It is spelled with a K and I will still have people spell it with a C, spell it some other funky way, or it will just say, Hey, podcaster. We'll get to that one in a second, but it just says, Hey, so if you are pitching to be on someone's podcast, please call them by name. Please call them. I don't care if you have a template, swap it out like whenever you send it, but um, call them by name. Call or you at the bare minimum, I would have accepted someone to say, Hey, Crystal, host of the Profit Podcast, or Hey, host of the Profit Podcast, or Profit Podcast team, whatever, like something more than Hey, but it gets worse. Now, the first line of this. <laughs> And I'm only going to read a few words, but I laughed out loud. It says, legit, not trying to sell you anything. That's their opener. Legit, not trying to sell you anything. Um, Red flag number two. You're going to be asking me for something. If you're not asking like to sell me anything, you're going to be asking for something. Um, Don't start this way. Don't start this way. And I do, again, we're going to go over some what not to do, and then I'll share with you what you should do. Um, Again, red flag number two, legit not trying to sell you anything. That's not the way that you should start your pitch or start like I'm immediately I'm on guard and I'm not open for connection. It's like as soon as I read that, a wall went up and I'm like... No, I'm, I I was defensive like throughout the rest of reading it and I wanted to just throw it in the trash. This is at the point where I'm like, oh, I'm just going to delete this. I don't even, I don't even care. Like they're stating they're not trying to sell me anything, but immediately I was just like, nope, I don't even want to, I don't want to do it. So I'm not going to read you the rest of this. I just wanted to point out some of the highlights. They went into, um, it's it says, okay, so I will read this because I just saw this piece. It says, to be clear, My intention is not to pressure you in any way. I know guest is finding hard, so I thought it'd be worth reaching out and saying hi. So I do feel like the genuine intention behind wanting to, you know, okay, they really wanted to be a guest on my podcast. They wanted to talk about their platform. That's really what this is. I've had a lot of SaaS companies in the podcast space reach out and they really want to get on my show. Like I I feel, I feel the desperation in their voice and their emails to get in front of podcasters. And um, it's very clear to me that that's all they want. 
They just want to use my platform. And it goes on to talk about how incredible they are and their platform is. There's not really a mention of my audience or the value that they could bring to my people outside of them being braggadocious and talking about themselves and their platform. So um, again, more red flags, yellow flags all over the place. But um, this one, I didn't even, I didn't even respond back to it. I, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. So <laughs> don't start your email with legit, not trying to sell you anything. There are better ways to phrase that. Again, I think it just goes back to like, I understand the intention of saying that, but don't say that, right? That should be implied, implicit in what you are saying. Um, but don't actually say that out loud in your pitches. All right. That's bad pitch. Number one, bad pitch. Number two is dear podcaster. Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. Okay, that's not, you know, it's it's not the end of the world. But I wish you could see this and I cannot, I won't share this like even in a YouTube video in the future because um, their name is clearly all through it. And I don't think, I mean, I probably could go and like... <laughs> Like white it out, black it out, but it's literally everywhere. Their name is everywhere. So it's another SaaS company that's pitching, and it is every single sentence they have the name of what their company is, and their email is formatted so weird, so, so weird. So I don't know if someone created this like in a Word document, and then they put it into their email provider to go and send it, but it's like, it has the title, like the, let's call it like a question in there. Like, why would you have me, you know, or why would you, you know, pick me to be on your podcast? And then like that's bolded. And then it looks like they put a list like underneath, but it's all the way over to like the right side of the page. So it looks really funky. And to me that screams lazy because they didn't do like a double check to make sure that things looked right before they sent it. It looks like they just took it, they copied and pasted it and threw it into an email and they sent it over. So that's like a big red flag and something that you should look out for is if the formatting is funky in it. And I've seen this other times where it just looks like it's a direct copy and paste of something and it doesn't make sense. That's why when I'm looking at this, I'm like, this doesn't make sense It's very sloppy, like put together, and it doesn't actually reference a single person. So this is another like, even though this came from like an actual person, like I could read their name on here. It doesn't just say the company's name, but all throughout it, they're just talking about their company and not like a single person. So it was very confusing. And I mean, it's the third sentence on here and it says like to refresh your memory about what their company is. And I'm just like, I didn't, I didn't ask for any, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't want this. I don't, I'm not interested, (laughs) not interested at all in this. So that was bad pitch number two, bad pitch number three. So this was the one that really was kind of the nail in the coffin for me because they had sent me a pitch. I hadn't gotten around to reading it and people will do the follow-up, right? I love the follow-up. Okay. I cannot tell you how many times, like there are several people like Christina Linkowski, Angie Trueblood, like several people that work for these types of agencies or own these agencies in this community. And they know that the magic is in the follow-up because podcasters get busy. The host of the shows or their teams don't often read all of the 
the pitches that they receive. And so they know like, oh, you know, I got to follow up and be intentional and, you know, have something that links back to the original message or something that is like a gentle nudge to get that pitch back at the top of the inbox. I totally get it. And this works a lot of the time. This did not work for this individual and uh, really frustrated me. Maybe this is a personality thing too. So I'll take all of this with a grain of salt. I probably should have said that from the very beginning, but I don't like it when people get pushy in email and believe that I owe them something. This is kind of like when, you know, you start creating different content on social media and people are like, well, what do you, you need to go back to doing this. This is why I started following you, like very entitled. And I'm like, mm, well, you know, this is my account. I kind of do what I want. So this, this is just the rule of the game. But when people get pushy in my inbox, it's an immediate, like I was ready to throw this one in the trash as soon as I got it. Then I was like, oh, wait. I'm doing content about bad podcast bitches. This is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. And this person actually states their age in this. Like that's part of their like claim to fame is how successful they are at a young age. So I will give this person the benefit of the doubt. It's maybe they just don't know. Maybe they just don't know that this is how etiquette works in email. And maybe they just don't care, too. That could be part of it. Maybe they're part of the, you know, revolution of, hey, this is, I'm just going to ask for what I want, blah, blah, blah. And maybe I'm just old. Maybe it's me showing my age that I'm a dinosaur in the podcast space because I've been doing this for five years now. But I'm just going to go ahead and start it. So they do say, hey, Crystal, hope my email finds you well. Hey, that's a great start, right? No red flags, no yellow flags, nothing. Then it turns, then it turns. Just wanted to ask when I can expect an update from you. Uh, okay, well, that's that's a little pushy. Um, I would expect that from someone I was working with, you know, graphic designer, a contractor, someone like that I'm actually working with, but that immediately implies like that I owe them something first first and foremost. Um, but I do, okay, again, it's it's a follow up. Then I'm not going to read the entire rest of it because um, it would, you know, again, I'm not putting anybody on blast, but I will say they just go into why they are so unique and so incredible. And then this is the part I wanted to say was the nail in the coffin. For more information about me and to see why your listeners would benefit from me being your guest please visit my media kit. And that was really the piece where I was like, you don't get it. Like you, you don't understand. You don't get it because it's not about you, right? Like this is the key point. And, you know, I've talked to so many people that are in this space and so many people that do podcast pitching and podcast guesting, and they work on behalf of other people and they do this for a living It is not about you as the guest. It is about the value that you can add to someone else. That is what this is about. And that is why it is so important to really understand what to do, what not to do. But I wanted to share some of these as the red flags and the what not to do's. Okay. The what not to do's for podcast pitches. Now, Let's move into the next piece of this. So we have a few segments that we're covering here today. So I wanted to read you the three bad podcast pitches that were the inspiration for this episode. Then I want to talk to you about the Instagram story that I posted about bad podcast pitches. And here's what it said. It said, should I create content about bad podcast guest pitches? They're so lazy, terrible really, and getting worse each week. And I want to share what not to do. So I, that's all. I just posted that on Instagram and the response was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. I have heard from so many of you. So Belinda from the Healthy Celiac podcast reached out and I'm just going to read part of her message. She said, yes, I was actually going to ask you about this and how to politely decline guest. So we were, you know, just chatting back and forth and talking about, you know, some of the instances of where, 
you would want to decline guests, whether it's people coming onto your show or wanting to come onto your show that don't align with what you do, or it's clearly super spammy and promotional, or it's just one of those instances where you're like, I just don't think they would be a good fit. And you have this gut feeling, okay? I talk about this a lot, but don't ignore that gut feeling if you're like, I just don't think it would work. Or I don't know that my audience would really, you know, like it's just, it's not for me right now. That is perfectly fine. It is your show, right? You get to do what you want with your show. And so when I think about politely declining, First of all, and this could be controversial <laughs> depending on, you know, your etiquette and your personality, but I don't respond to all the podcast pitches that I get. I don't. I don't take the time to sit there and say, oh, you know, we're just not looking for someone right now. Like I'm ignoring them. That's really what it is. And maybe that's not the healthiest way to deal with that is to ignore people. Like I think it is, it's a little rude. Let's, let's call it what it is, especially like my Southern hospitality, like cringes a little bit thinking it like, Oh, you're just literally ignoring people or you're just throwing their emails in the trash. But to be really honest, there's a lot of pitches that come in and I don't have time to respond to all of them. And I have, as part of my, like, I have an autoresponder on my email and it like says, like, if we're interested, like, we'll get back to you. I make it very clear that I don't, I don't owe them anything. I don't owe them anything. Like if, if it's, if it's of interest and we'll get back to you, I don't even go into like, oh, you know, like if, if we don't get back to you, we're sorry. It's none of that. I just, I don't get back to a lot of people. That's very intentional because I don't want to manage an inbox full of pitches that I have to sort through. And then I have to go back to them and say, oh, I'm so sorry. This is why, you know, the show isn't going to work. I just don't respond to them. This happens on Instagram DMs. This happens in email. And I'm okay with being that person that doesn't respond to all the podcast pitches. So that, again, it could be a controversial way of handling it, but I just don't respond to all the pitches. But if you do see someone that you're like, oh, you know, I do see a potential to collaborate with them down the road, but I just don't think that having them on the show right now works out for me or for my schedule, then you can kind of kick the can down the road a little bit and say, well, you know, we have all of our content planned for this quarter or for the next however many months, but check back in with me at the end of the year or the beginning of the year or, you know, whatever works out for your schedule. But yeah, politely declining guest, I can see like it's it's kind of it's a thing. It's a thing. It gets awkward because you're like, I know it wouldn't be a good fit. But at the end of the day, you don't owe everybody a response to every single like query that people have to be on your podcast. So that was one comment I really wanted to read. And then Christina. So Christina Linkowski, we had so much fun at Craft and Commerce together. So she is local to Boise. <laughs> and we hung out so much. I have fallen in love with her. Like we're BFFs now. Christina, I'm going to have to come back to Boise and hang out or you're going to have to come to Texas or something. But it was so much fun. And her response to my original post that said like, hey, should I create content about bad pitches? She said, but like, feel free to use great examples too. So <laughs> she does this. She's one of those people I was talking about earlier that does podcast pitches on behalf of other people and helps them guest on podcast. And she actually does something really cool where she guarantees so many podcasts uh, when you're working with her that she will get you on a podcast. And uh, go check out Christina. I'm going to have all of her credentials linked in the today's episode show notes. Notes, but yeah, Christina, like it just cracked me up. She was like, please just like use the good ones too. <laughs> like, don't just rely on all the crappy ones. Like, we, like there are good people out there too. So yes, Christina, you are doing an incredible job. And then I wanted to give a shout out to Michelle. So Michelle wrote, I have a folder I keep them in. She's talking about her bad podcast pitches. And I'm actually using them in some, or actually using some for my book. So Michelle's creating a book where she's including bad podcast pitches. And I wanted to read some of these because 
Oh my gosh, y'all, it is not just you. If you've gotten bad podcast pitches, these happen to everyone. They happen to everybody, and it's just a matter of how you deal with them, whether you want to deal with them or not, and what to do instead. But I actually had someone, so Brittany McBean, she reached out to me and said, okay, I want to share my story. And she went into like the whole story, like in Instagram DMs. And then I was like, will you submit your audio file? (laughs) actually tell the story about what happened. It was so good. And she said, sure. Yeah. So here is Brittany's experience with bad podcast pitches. Hey, this is Brittany McBean. So anytime I write a podcast pitch, I try to put a lot of time and energy and care into it and really make it personalized, put a lot of personality into it. I'm a conversion copywriter. It's really important to me that They are written well. I'm going to tell you about one that backfired. So I wanted to pitch a podcaster whose training I had just attended inside a community we were both a part of. And in this training, she had shared how when she first pitched someone, she pitched the wrong name of the podcast. So I thought it would be super cute if in my podcast pitch to her, in the first line, I included a little inside joke. So in the pitch, I purposely titled the name of her podcast wrong in the very first sentence and then immediately made it clear that I was making a joke and went on to write this incredibly clever and persuasive podcast pitch about what an amazing guest I would be. And then I got an email back from her assistant telling me that before I sent a pitch, I should probably check and make sure that I had the name of the podcast right. And then I had to swallow my pride and very respectfully tell her that it was supposed to be funny because jokes are best when you have to explain them and that it was an inside joke that she was supposed to get if she had been the one reading it. And then I realized that the host might not always be the person reading your pitch and that you should probably write your pitch to be self-explanatory immediately and not need any extra thought or time or attention and just get straight to the point. But that's nowhere near as bad as the person who pitched my podcast with a pitch all about how amazing they would be on my podcast. They had listened to all of the episodes. They loved my podcast. They wanted to come on it. I just emailed my list with an interview of someone else's podcast I had been on, so it was fresh on their mind, but the problem is I don't have a podcast, so I could not accept their pitch. So at least my pitch wasn't that bad. Wow, right? Like, first of all, I loved Brittany's story, so thank you so much for (laughs) submitting this. You could go check Brittany out at Brittany L. McBean on Instagram. Uh, Like she said, she's a launch strategist and copywriter, and I loved her story and thought, oh my gosh, what a cringy backfire that she learned from. And it's one of those things that I totally get it because at the end of the day, like making those immediate connections with people that you're just like, oh my gosh, I have the best segue. Like I should absolutely talk about this because they know what it's about and it's the kind of like an inside joke and, you know, they'll totally get it. But to her point, you know, like her assistant's point that she had pitched to, not the host may not be the one reading your pitch. So you have to think about that and how you can get creative with it, but also like, oh crap, they may not be the ones. So it, it's kind of this weird, you know, trickery and, you know, ability to gauge like, is it their team reading it or is it them? So again, Brittany, thank you so much for playing, or sorry, for sending in your clip and playing along. That's what I was going to say, playing along in this game of bad podcast pitches. And I cringe. Like my skin is crawling when you talk about people that pitch you, you don't even have a podcast (laughs) or 
like you, like she, we had continued the conversation and she had said, you know, I do research like very diligently. She does her research and sees like, is this a solo only podcast? I have people, people pitch the potty report, right? My daily podcast where in over 800 episodes, I've never once had a guest. People will pitch that podcast and say, it's incredible. I love your show. It's amazing. I listen to every single episode. And you know, that one guest that you had on, I'm like, "Mm, red flag, like triple red flag. There are no guests. I don't know why you're talking to me about this podcast. There's no, there's none there. Like there's no (laughs) guest on this podcast ever. But then she goes on to say that she makes sure that, you know, the podcast has been publishing in the last six months. Because that's another thing that I'll see is people will say, oh, you know, this podcast um, looks like it has a great title. It has my audience, blah, blah, blah. But then like, if you dig more into it, you're like, oh, they haven't published anything in over a year. (laughs) Maybe you shouldn't pitch them. You want to get with those shows that are consistent. So, so many incredible takeaways. Again, thank you so much, Brittany. But I promised you that I would share what to do. We covered a ton of what not to do, but I wanted to give you a few action steps on what you can do when you are looking at the elements of a really good pitch and what that looks like. And there's going to be a lot more details in the show notes. So I want you to make sure that you click on those wherever you're listening. There should be a a tab that says episode website, or it has like, that's going to take you directly directly to the show notes for today. But the first thing is the introduction, right? We talked about the importance of greeting someone, like just greet them with their first name. I know that sounds boring, but at the end of the day, boring is very clear and not confusing. So just say, hey, Crystal, awesome. We're on the right, like off to a right start. Do not keep the first name or whatever you've put name in your template change the freaking name. This should be like priority number one, because that's the first thing people are going to see. So make sure that you have the first name of the podcast host, or you could just say their team. Hey, team profit. Like it's very, that way it doesn't matter whether it's the host of the show or someone on their team. You can absolutely do that. Like if someone sends me like, Hey, team profit, I wouldn't be offended by that at all. I'd be like, Oh, they tried. (laughs) They tried. The next piece is connection. You have to establish a connection or a common ground with the podcast host. So this could be something to do with something related in your field. It's like, oh, you know, we're both obsessed with podcasts, you know, or I have a love of podcasts too. I listen to one every single day, or these are my favorite shows. Like, or just the fact of someone listening to this show, I will say, I'm going to give Jessica from uh, Amanda McKinney's team, she and I've already given her a shout out. So shout out again, Jessica, because what she did so well is she not only referenced a recent episode, and I'll have a lot of people do this where they're like, oh, your recent episode about blah, blah, blah was great. But she also took it a step further and said exactly why that podcast episode meant something to her. It was the one about, I still remember this very vividly, and this is why those connections matter, is she talked about the episode that I did was like a debrief from Podcast Movement. She not only established the connection that she had listened to it, but she went into detail of what she appreciated about that episode. And as you can tell, here we are months later, and I still remember that connection piece. So it is very important to have immediately a connection that you can make with the host. The next one is your unique experience or expertise. Like what makes you different? And people ask this question all the time. It's like, how do I stand out? You need to sit down and think about this. What do you do that helps you stand out from the crowd? And for me personally, I call myself a podcast therapist. Like this is part of my brand and part of who I am. As I'm, I'm here to help you with the mindset pieces of podcasting. If you want to get into all the technical stuff and all those other, like, I, that's not my jam. There's tons of other people out there that want to get into compression and equalization and like all ducking and all this other stuff. I don't care about talking about all that. I really don't. It's part of the process. And yes, there's editing stuff that I do on the back end, but I could care less about talking about that. I want to talk about the storytelling and the elements of podcasting that I love. So I will plug those into my unique expertise. 
And then the next step is the relevant topics that you can bring to the table. This is where you can go back and listen to a host episode and say, you know what, you've talked about this, this, and this, but what about this topic? And offer some suggestions. Like, I haven't seen you talk about email marketing on your show, or I haven't seen you talk about this or that, and this is my area of expertise. So start thinking about those relevant topics that you can bring to the table that haven't already been explored on the podcast. Then the next piece of a really good podcast pitch is your storytelling So showcase your ability to engage with an audience through storytelling. So whether that's like a short and like concise, really like little antidote or mini story that you can share in there that has like a really powerful message. And this helps a podcast host see what kind of content that you can contribute to them. Again, this doesn't have to be like five paragraphs long. Like we're talking about two to three sentences. And this is really why storytelling is so important because you should be able to really break maybe your own story down into two to three sentences and instead of having to have multiple paragraphs and pages to tell your story, make it short and concise and put it in two or three sentences and boom, it's there. Maybe that's your bio. Maybe that's something that you include as like, you know, at the bottom of the page, it's like your full bio. I've seen this and I actually appreciate it where people will have links in the email to all of their stuff instead of including it in there or they'll drop it at the very bottom, like after the sign off, they'll say to read my full bio, like go to the bottom of this email, but here's a quick two sentences or whatever. The next piece is your credentials and accomplishments. This one as a host, I don't really care as much about seeing um, unless it's relevant to the conversation because again, I, I think that it's something that you should include if you have them. So if it's you have some really stellar achievements or notable experiences that you should share, like it helps build your credibility, but it's not the most important thing for me as a host to read. So if you start an email with this, I don't care. But if you add value to me, you share how you'd be a great fit, and then you include this towards the bottom or the closing, and you're like, oh, by the way, like, you know, I, here's why I could do this. I've, you know, I have a New York Times bestseller. I have, you know, I've built teams of blah, blah, blah that can attribute to this. Like making those connections still with your credentials is more important than starting your email. It's like, Hey, podcaster, I'm a seven figure coach and I'm incredible and I'm amazing, blah, blah, blah. Like, don't start with your credentials and accomplishments. Make someone care about you first, and then you can go into more of those credentials and what you can bring to the table. Or it's like that credibility, it's that social proof that you should be there. And then the next piece is having previous media experience. Now, if you've been a guest on other podcasts, if you have actual sound bites that you can link to, or you have a press page on your website, like once you start guesting on a few podcasts, I recommend having a, a press page. And I'll actually link to mine in the show notes because this is something that I did a few years ago, but it is important. I think that you should have it and then link there and say, look, you can go check out, these are all my previous podcast interviews or blog articles that I've written or media appearance appearances, whether it's publications, TV shows, even a Facebook Live or a YouTube live stream. Link to all of that because at the end of the day, as a host, I just wanna know, can you speak in complete sentences? Can you actually engage an audience? Does your style vibe with me? Like, because I don't want to have an experience where it's really awkward. Like, I like to go and listen to someone else's podcast or see them on video and see like, oh, okay, they can hold their own and they can speak really well and they're not like an aggressive personality that's going to interrupt and be like super controversial. Like, I if that's you, I want to know that beforehand because you're probably not gonna be a great fit for my show. So (laughs) I wanna know that. So previous media experience can be great. And then your availability and flexibility. If you're gonna start guesting on a bunch of podcasts, set up a Calendly link. Don't expect to do this back and forth. Like set up a link where people can go and you can just tell them like, hey, um, I'm very flexible, available, and I'll send, you know, if things work out, and you really don't have to include this, but this is kind of like one of those optional things is 
um, if you're interested, let's talk about setting up a time and I can send you over my link to get us scheduled or I can work with my assistant, like whatever that is for you. But um, I think it is a little premature to send this in the actual email, but just letting them know that you're flexible, you're willing to accommodate the host schedule. I think that is important. And then the last piece is your gratitude and closing. This goes back to my Southern hospitality. I do think it's important to say thank you so much for your time and your consideration and just reiterating your excitement about their show and the possibility of being a guest. So you can provide your contact information and, you know, what next steps should be and answer, you know, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. But at the end of the day, I think um, making one last connection point is important too. Like whether it's quoting them, this can get a little weird and a little, you know, it, I think it depends on the host, but I think it's fun to put almost like a PS strategy where you make another connection piece where it's like, hey, you know, I heard that you have a Boston Terrier too, and that's cool because I have a Boston or you know, I know that you have three kids and, you know, I'm also a working parent and I totally get, you know, juggling all the schedules, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be this like weird connection thing, but it's that last chance to make your pitch memorable. And I think it's, it's important to try to do that. And this is an art. It takes a while, but if you are planning on guesting on other shows, it's worth investing in the effort. And if you are receiving pitches, these are some of the things that you should be looking out for. And those red flags, oh my goodness, we already talked about those earlier. But um, yeah, I think that pitching and guesting on podcast is so beautiful and it is such an art. And I am forever grateful to all the incredible people that have come onto this podcast and shared their expertise and continue to pitch me. Like, come on, you want to be on the be on the show? Like send me your podcast pitch. I literally, like if if nothing, if the only thing you got out of this show today is I literally gave you the blueprint for how to become a guest on this podcast. So if you're interested, pitch me. Show me what you got. Like if this is the thing, if you've been wanting to grow your podcast and get out in front of more audiences, if you just want to practice doing an interview, like reach out to me, send me an email. This is my challenge to you. If you've been wanting to get on more shows, then let's do it. Let's see, let's see what you got. But I want to do a quick recap because I want you to remember that a guest pitch should be personalized, concise, and clearly, clearly, clearly communicate the value that you bring to the podcast. So tailor your pitch to your genuine interest in the show. Don't do this copy and paste BS. Don't do it. It is one of those things where you can work from a template, but at the end of the day, I told you already, those connections matter. That will be what makes you stand out from the crowd is making those human connections with the host. Yeah, it takes more time. And yeah, it's going to take a little bit more effort, but it is absolutely worth it when you get on shows that have your audience and other potential listeners that you can reach. So this was fun. This was fun. I really appreciate it. So again, thank you to everybody that contributed, Brittany, for sending in your clips and everybody's comments and messages about this. Um, we'll have to do more. We'll have to do more like this because this was a lot of fun and sharing what not to do how to fix it, how to make it better. And I actually have some other content. Uh, there's podcast episodes and some YouTube content about podcast pitches, about guesting, and I'm gonna link to that in the show notes. So again, go to crystalprofit.com forward slash podcast and you're gonna find all the show notes for um, for the podcast. So this was incredible. Again, thank you so much for everybody that contributed. And as always, remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around to a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called 
fan mail shout outs. And I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in an upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs. 